Well, G dang, Aves amabilis, the amabilis fir, also known as Pacific silver fir, these really are some of the most lovely trees we've got here in Cascadia. I mean, look at this beauty, or that one over there. In fact, their Latin scientific name actually means lovely fir, and I couldn't agree more. Amabilis firs are some of the most common fir trees we have here in Cascadia, often characterized by their tall, straight, thick trunks and really symmetrical crowns. They grow really well at higher elevations in the interior mountains, often mixed forest stands of Douglas firs and hemlocks, but they also grow really well at sea level in the northern part of their reach in mixed forest stands of western red cedar and hemlocks, like this one I'm in right now on Vancouver Island. These trees are really shade tolerant, which means they make great second generation successors in forests, you know, but they never quite grow as old or grow as big as some of the other trees in the area, so they never fully dominate these ecosystems. But Little guys like this are really common throughout the understory. Now, the bark on the Mabel's fir trees makes them super easy to identify, especially when they're young, because it's really smooth, gray, and covered in these resinous blisters. Then as they age, it tends to crack into more vertical scales. Now these resinous blisters really help protect the tree against fungus and insect infections, and actually First Nations used to chew the pitch here just for fun. In fact, the didadot name for the tree actually means sweet plant. Now, this thin bark and these resinous blisters makes them slightly more susceptible to fires. So when fires do come through, they're usually the first to go, whereas other tree species like Douglas firs or Western red cedars are more resilient and can withstand those localized fire events. Fir trees are easily distinguishable from all other conifers because their needles are blunted at the tip, often with a single notch. Now the needles on the Mabilis fir trees are this really rich, deep, vibrant hue of green with a single groove on the upper side, and then on the underside, they have two rows of white stomata, which is how the tree is gonna regulate its internal water supply or transpire. Now these white stomata from the underside kind of give it a bit of a silverish appearance, which is where it gets its common name of the Pacific silver fir. The needles splay out horizontally from the branches with needles on the upper side lying flat pointed towards the end of the, end of the branches, even though way up there in the upper boughs, they all tend to curl upwards. Now, another key defining feature for all true fir trees versus other conifer trees is that their female cones or seed cones stand upright or erect on top of the branches versus other conifer trees whose seed cones hang below the branches. Now, in the case of Pacific silver fir or Amabilis fir, their seed cones are about 12 centimeters tall, really barrel shaped, and they turn a really cool, rich hue of purple when they're mature, and then their seeds flake off throughout the fall and the winter time, leaving their central core or spike standing. Now, I would love to be able to show you this in person, but they're like, they're way up there. So even though these trees might often get overshadowed in popularity by other big trees in the area like western red cedars or Sitka spruces, Amabilis fir trees or Pacific silver firs, in my book, pure gold. Oh, gold dang, what a beauty. If you're enjoying these videos, feel free to subscribe to my channel below or just keep watching to keep learning because the more you know, the more fun you're going to have next time you're outside in nature, enjoying it. Sure is rad out here. There's just, there's so much green, you know, I've never seen this much green before.